Divorced Redditors. What was it that finally made you or your spouse end the marriage? Serious. Story one. I will never forget this for as long as I live. Our marriage had been on autopilot for a while, and one night we finally had a brutally honest conversation argument. She asked me, what do you want from me? I said, I just want you to be with me the way I want to be with you. This is when I knew our marriage was over. She said, well, that's just not going to happen. That memory is so incredibly painful for me. Even now, after we've been divorced for years and I'm remarried with a beautiful child, I still cry sometimes thinking about my ex. It still hurts. Story two. It wasn't the cheating three years after our wedding or even the 60K in debt she racked up. The final straw for me was when she put our older daughter's head through drywall during a manic rage. I carried my older daughter, four days short of four years old, on my shoulder with one arm while pushing the little one, then six months old, in a stroller and in that three blocks, vowed to myself it was over. And it was. Story three. It took years for me to finally get to the point where I was done. The last straw was the night he drunkenly screamed at me for hours, at least five hours. Then he blared poor music for another hour or so before finally passing out. He'd done it several times in the past, but that time it broke me. I spent most of the next day crying. That gut-wrenching, mournful type of crying. I had a job and moved out six months later. It's been four years. I don't regret a minute. Story four. He became a totally different person after we got married. He became very controlling and manipulative. I was expected to do all the chores and make dinner every night. This after working a highly stressful 40-hour week job. He became emotionally and verbally abusive to me. Constantly thought I was cheating on him. If I had anything other than a smile on my face, at all times I was ridiculed. Everything that happened was always my fault. He was never wrong. He was always the victim. I didn't want to go home because I didn't know if I was walking into Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. Had him go to two different counselors and didn't make it more than two sessions with each because he didn't need therapy. I decided to stop it all when I started to become depressed from the constant stress. I am a normally very happy, positive person and I became a walking bunch of nerves. I couldn't get past the belief that anyone who truly loved me would never treat me like he had been. Have been divorced for six months now. Although I get lonely sometimes, I would still take loneliness a thousand times over being back with him. Story 5. I got it right the second time around, but the first time, no. We didn't live together first. Big mistake. He had been able to hide his alcoholism from me even though I knew and worked closely with him for three years before we started dating. After we got married, I tried to put him on the lease. He was denied for having three DUIs and a contributing to the delinquency of a minor charge. He said those were in his past and he's changed. Six mows later, I was dusting a bookcase and found a liquor bottle wedged behind some books and upon further sleuthing, found five more assorted bottles stashed around the apartment. We had a stocked liquor cabinet, but he wanted to hide his habit. He said he would get help. He didn't. One night he drove home drunk and shoved me against the wall when I told him how reckless that was. I called the cops. He got held overnight. I boxed his stuff and downloaded the divorce papers and told his dad to bring him to the bank after picking him up from the station so we could split the account and notarize the paperwork. He said, why are you overreacting to this? It's not like I hit you. And I said, why do you think I'm stupid enough to wait until you do? That was that. Story six. In the middle of a divorce now. When our daughter was a little over three months old, he was busted for child prohibited photos. Edit. A lot of people are asking how I caught him. I didn't catch him. Law enforcement did. Apparently, there were hundreds of images videos of underage girls, as young as seven, on our computer. A lot of people are also asking me if he accidentally stumbled across it. No, you can't accidentally stumble across hundreds of images and videos and save them to your computer. A lot of people are also suggesting I was quick to divorce him since he didn't act on these impulses. I don't know if he ever acted on them. In my mind, he did. The girls he watched in the videos and images are victims. He took part in exploiting them. I can't look past that. Story 7. She came up with a different excuse every time I asked her. She refused marriage counseling. She refused to talk in depth about it. They ranged from the reasonable to the petty. So, I don't know. I'm going with she felt like she was too young and missing out on her party girl years. She could have figured that out earlier in our eight-year relationship, so I could have gotten some time back. Story 8. We got married way too quick. It was Vegas where she was from. Came back to NY, where I worked and she did nothing at all. She left around Xmas to see family in Vegas. Came back like three weeks later. Then a month later, just after she interviewed for a job, she told me she was leaving again to go to Virginia to help her worthless aunt move back to Vegas. She gets there and blows 500 in two days, then calls me to ask for money to put gas in her aunt's car. I said hell no, and she didn't talk to me for two days. I finally tell her this isn't working. We get quick Vegas divorce, and she is remarried six months later. Story 9. Husband asked for a separation last week. Our first therapy session revealed that he wanted out and fast. He says he doesn't know. I don't know. 
I have a stressful job and my dad passed away six months ago so I've been a pain in the peach. Who knows? I'm still shaking my head in disbelief. Wanted to separate bills and accounts. When I do that and it negatively impacts him, he gets poor. He said things like, society made me get married. You bamboozled me into marrying you. I don't know what I want, but I don't want you. Even if I left you tomorrow, I'd still love you. It's been a fun week. Story 10. Easy answer, Steve. See, Steve was that guy my ex knew in high school. That guy where there was always a spark of chemistry, but the time was never right. He was the one that got away. Years later, when we'd been married for a few years, she got back in touch with some old friends and wound up going to visit those old friends. Steve included. Old sparks began to fly, and next thing you know, the missus was carrying on an affair with Steve. She left me to be with him. They were soulmates, after all. Denied their true love by 14 years of time and two intervening marriages. Me and my wife, and Steve and his. That's the easy answer. Blame it on Steve. Truth is, I never should have got married in the first place. At least not to her. It was doomed from the get-go, and Steve was just a willing scapegoat. Story 11. My mom divorced my dad because he got caught for having on his laptop last September. She said it was the last straw for their marriage. They lasted 31 years together, and they always talked about doing things and going places too. But every time she would plan something, he denied it, saying it sounded silly or not worth his time, or he thought they didn't have the money for it, or they just wouldn't do it, and the idea would be swept under the rug. I'm 20, and their divorce was finalized about two weeks ago. It hurts, man. Story 12. I worked with special needs people, and my ex would say the nastiest, most disgusting things about special needs people to put me down and mock my career ambitions. That's when he bothered to talk to me at all. He wanted a woman that would take care of him and his needs, but he cared very little about reciprocating. I didn't want to have kids with him and have the kids think that how we were living was acceptable. Story 13. My daughter was crying one night. She had a bad dream, and my husband told me to stay in bed and went to her. She was not comfortable with him, so she kept crying for me. It escalated to him spanking her and screaming at her to stop crying. This woke up her brother, who started crying and got spanked as well. He then broke apart the chair in their room because he stubbed his toe on it, the one I rocked them in at night, and threatened to burn their new beds in the backyard if they didn't stop crying. They were five and three. He came into our bedroom where I sat, scared and stunned, got dressed, told me to deal with it, and left. It was 1 a.m. I didn't see him until the next night. I have no idea where he went or what he did in that time. All I know is I started packing and making plans that day, and nine months later, I moved out. That night was the culmination of years of gaslighting me and neglecting his children. His parents told me it was the best decision I ever made dot dot dot. It caused him to finally become a real parent. And not having to live with his mental health issues was the best decision for me. He still struggles with the parenting, but we are doing very well now. And we are amiable and focused on the best for the kids. Story 14. Would spend $1,200 on his car but yelled at me for spending over 40 on groceries. This peach spent thousands of dollars on his car and buying himself lunch daily. Always made more money than I did, but never got bills paid. I paid everything because if I didn't, I would come home to no power or telephone. Also, lots of mental abuse. I figured if I have to pay for everything anyway, I shouldn't have to deal with the mental abuse. He has been gone three years and my mortgage is two months ahead, and my phone and power constantly have a credit on the next month. Story 15. The final straw for me was having to beg for a disinterested hand job before bed on our fifth wedding anniversary. We became roommates instead of lovers. It worked for a while, but then she and I became really poor roommates for each other as well. She is a great mom, and she thinks I'm a great dad, but we're both really horrible as a couple. No cheating, no financial issues. Just really, really different people that probably pulled the trigger for marriage too quickly. We both just thought it was the next step after we each graduated from college. Good news is we're both civil and care for each other, just not in a romantic capacity. My only regret is that my kids won't have a traditional two-parent upbringing like I did. It made me respect my parents' loving 35-plus-year marriage a whole lot more. Story 16. I just realized that no matter what I did, he was never going to change. I let him walk all over me and cheat on me for years and kept thinking of, I just did more, was more patient, a better wife, etc. He would realize his mistakes. Example, he would cheat. I would catch him. A huge fight would break out. He would manipulate me into it somehow being my fault he did it. You don't love me enough. You'll never trust me again. You didn't have close relationship with me that one time back in 2006 and I felt rejected. Somehow, I would have to make it up to him and prove to him I trusted him. I'd forgive him and work my peach off to be happier, nicer, more understanding. All the nonsense he fed me. And after a few months, I would just catch him all over again. The last straw was when he convinced me he had really changed. He wanted to be a family, the whole package. Of course, I ended up pregnant. 
It turned out to be high risk and I was hospitalized often. Only allowed home with bed rest. Even then he wouldn't stop running around on me. I lost 45 pounds. My hair started falling out. I was too weak to even walk. My own family thought I was dying. He didn't even care. So at one point I was sitting by myself and I just realized I was done. He was never going to change. And it wasn't my fault. I couldn't fix whatever was broken in him and I was done trying. It took six months after the baby was born before doctors would let me go back to work. I moved out, spent a few years alone, swearing off men. Now I'm with a fantastic man that loves me. The divorce is still dragging on. My ex tried a lot of poor tricks when he found out I was leaving. I laughed in his face at everyone. He doesn't get it. At one point, I seriously thought I would pass away. I thought my kids would be left alone with only him to take care of them. After going through that, nothing he could do could bother me. Ever. So anyway, that's my story. Hope it helps. Story 17. Late to the party and probably going to get buried, but I'd like to share. I'm active duty and my ex-husband was is a civilian. Years ago, I went overseas for a 15-month remote tour and he stayed stateside with our 10-month-old. I called him to let him know I got approved to come back and visit for two weeks for my mid-tour and he said he needed to call the utility company and have the gas turned on so I could take a hot shower when I got home. Me. Wait, you don't have hot water. Why? X, it's expensive. Keep in mind that the baby was now 1.5 and this was winter in the Midwest. Me. How does baby take baths? X. I just run the water and let it come up to room temperature. Our heat was powered by gas. Our hot water was powered by gas. Our stove was gas. My child had been living in a cold house and eating cold food. Taking room temperature baths. He had a decent paying job. I paid the rent and daycare bills directly. Plus, we shared a joint bank account. There was no reason my kid should have gone without. When I landed stateside, I went to the house to get my kid and he attacked me. Ran out of there with kiddo and straight to a lawyer to file for divorce. I found out later he'd been arrested for possession with his girlfriend a couple weeks prior to my visit. Don't know where my kid was for that? The police report makes no mention of a baby in the car. I spent my two weeks on my mom's couch and my kid had to go back to my ex's house when I left. I finally got full custody after his neighbors found my four-year-old running around outside in the middle of the night crying, trying to find his dad. Ex had left him home alone. Neighbors called the police and I got an emergency order. This ended up being longer than I intended. Sorry, all. Thanks for reading. Story 18. We never stopped loving each other, but she could never communicate what she really wanted. And then she spent about a year completely hiding her feelings, while putting all of the responsibility on me to fix everything, without making me aware. When we were breaking up, she finally let me know what she really wanted, and what she had meant to say but couldn't. But by then, she was too committed in her own mind to splitting up. The worst was that she manipulated me into doing things for her, before she told me she was leaving. Story 19. We'll be divorced very soon. Have met with lawyers. Three weeks ago to the day he lost it, he beat the cow out of me, choked me, then pulled a gun on me I front of our four-year-old. The past few years he has struggled with a pain pill addiction, even going so far as to steal my medication. Once took one three-bottle of Percocet tense two days after it was filled. I didn't know for a week because I used those planner things. Tried to get him help. He didn't want it. Became increasingly hostile, and I kept thinking it would get better. But it never did, and this was the last straw. My son and I have both been diagnosed with PTSD, and I have a VPO. I also moved across the country while he was still in custody. Mommy bailed him out and then showed up at the house screaming about how I probably provoked him. I'm in a wheelchair. Anyway, yeah. Done. Over. Not asking for anything because fudge him, I got this. I'll add that he lost his cow because he was going through withdrawals from not having pills because I have spent the last six months in terrible pain to remove the temptation from his grasp. I didn't know he was getting them from a guy at work until he was in jail and I scoured everything. His eyes are super dark brown and I could never tell if his pupils were constricted, but I trusted that he was off them. He's just a loser. And I was stupid enough to give him chances because love, edit, a word. Story 20. My drinking. I'll save the excuses for another day, but at the end of the day, depression and drinking, chicken and egg scenario, led to the end. She started going to a therapist because I made her go nuts. And they recommended that she make an ultimatum with me that if I drank again, I would have to move out until I was sober three months. We had a two-year-old and four-year-old at that time, and the alcoholism had been going on for about three years. I drank again because I'm an alcoholic. I moved out and that was basically it. I had a few rough months but joined AA and checked myself into a seven-week rehab program. She started seeing someone else while I was in rehab. We had basically come to terms with the fact that it was over when I entered rehab and that she could never go back to where we once were. We sold off our house, paid off our debts, and she used the remaining money to buy a place for her and the kids. 
Sobriety brought a bit of sanity, and I started to become an active parent. It began with taekwondo twice a week for my older son after daycare and building trust, which eventually led to overnights, weekends, helping with homework and being a father. Because we had already dealt with all of our assets and respect had grown between us, we decided to file the divorce ourselves in the courthouse. I live in Canada. We sat down at our kitchen table and discussed what would be best for all of us. We discussed the issues that were uncomfortable and laid out concrete plans for the future, including what would ever happen in the case of a relapse. We went to the courthouse, filed the paperwork, and paid $210 for the processing fees. We then walked out of the courthouse and talked for a while. We cried, we hugged, we wished each other the best, and then we said we'd talk later that evening to figure out who was going to work on a school project with our son. We have established healthy boundaries in our relationship and are able to spend time around each other as co-parents. We go to parent-teacher interviews as a team, plan birthday parties together, and even go to the odd movie together when the kids ask. I pay child support and have since the beginning of the separation. Happy ending. When I tucked my youngest into bed last night had gave me a big hug and kiss and said, I love my family so much. Going on three years sober now. Story 21. Married 18 years. No kids. No candy slash alcohol slash abuse slash cheating issues. We both gained weight as the years progressed, but never obese. She completely and totally lost interest in close relationship, which started gradually around year 10. About a year before our divorce, I mentioned that it was like six months since we previously had close relations. She told me I was a disgusting person. Sorry for still being attracted to you. She also told me that she was not attracted to me any. That flipping terminated me. From the day I met her until the day I left her, I thought she was the most beautiful woman I had ever met. I wanted her every day. It's been seven years since our divorce. I still miss her sometimes. I still think about her sometimes. She was my wife and my best friend. Story 22. He made three times what I did, but could never explain why none of the bills were paid. I got a second job to try to cover them, and that just made him spend more money and even less bills were paid. When I expressed that I could absolutely not do this anymore after a year, he told me that he had no intent on doing anything different. This was how life was going to be, and my choices were to either get on the train with him or don't. I didn't. Story 23. She cheated on me from the beginning of our relationship. She cheated on me after we had our son. She cheated on me when we finally got married. She cheated on the guy she was cheating on me with. I finally filed for divorce after years of stupidity. Best goddamn decision of my life. Marriage is cheap. Divorce is expensive. Everyone needs to really consider this before popping the question. Story 24. I was tired of the merry-go-round that became our relationship. He would lie about something. The big one was buying a Dodge Viper while we were in the process of getting our home repaired. Then he would promise to change or not lie again. Things would change for a short time and then he would lie again. We were living in spectate states due to him being in the Navy. He could not handle the distance and would sabotage our relationship. He refused to partake in the divorce, which ended up requiring me subpoena the government to get his records. And to this day, he refuses to talk to his family or acknowledge anything has happened. It has been three years. Story 25. I caught him watching boy prohibited photos. We were married from a year, both of us Muslims, and we tried to have kids, but we couldn't. I'm happy about that now. We had an arranged marriage. I would say we were happy to get her, but he wasn't living his real self. He kept denying he was boy, mostly due to culture stigmas. We divorced five years ago. I got married again two years later and have two beautiful kids now. We lost touch after the divorce, but I was curious and looked for him in social media. I think he met someone he travels with him everywhere. Maybe they're just friends, but I don't think so. I'm happy for him. Story 26. I got married for all the wrong reasons. My dad had just passed away a couple of years before and my mother and sister collaborated in an act of epic that defies explanation later that same year. I was left completely alone. I was a mess. To shorten a ridiculously long story, I fell head over heels in like with a girl I worked with at the ripe old age of 19. She was smart and stubborn and genetically incapable of backing down from an argument. We became really good friends. If either of us had possessed any brains whatsoever, it would never have progressed beyond that. But we were young and extremely stupid. Redundant, I know. And one day, she gave me an ultimatum. Either we got married, or she was leaving me forever. Inadvertently, she pressed the button that was installed by my family a few years before. I was too much of a cat to tell her to fudge off, so I spent the next 10 years married to her. It wasn't all bad. Not at all. We had a lot of things in common, and shared lots of interests and curiosities. But in the end, there was no love. There was no mutual respect. I wasn't attracted to her. I'd be willing to bet that during the final three years of our marriage, we didn't have close relationship more than 10 times. I was unable to give her what she wanted from the relationship. I didn't want children. I disliked most of her family. 
with the notable exception of her youngest brother, whom she found generally irritating, and towards the end I was drinking a lot. I never got into trouble with the law or with my job, but I would come home every day, put on headphones, and get snot-slinging drunk. She was unhappy with the amount of money I made as a computer technician while she was raking in money hand over fist in her real estate job during the bubble just before the collapse. She derided me for not pulling my weight, and when I got laid off, it became even worse. She made her parents a bigger part of our life. I got lots of lectures from her parents. Side note, her dad was notorious for leaving the bathroom door open while he took a cow. Eventually, we both started cheating on each other. She was always the smarter half of a pair of idiots, so she eventually filed for divorce. I was so retarded that I probably would have stayed unhappily married, drunk, broke, and cheating forever. She did me a huge favor by filing for divorce, even though the particulars messed up us both much harder than she intended the divorce to entail. The divorce was eight years ago, and I have to admit that while it gangrenous pants, leprosy-spreading armadillo assholes at the time, getting divorced was one of the best things that has ever happened to me. Edit. A word or two. Story 27. The final straw was very specific. We'd been together and pathetically poor for years, married because we had an unplanned baby. He was either unemployed or underemployed the entire time. He refused to live in the real world. I'd tell him, for instance, we have to pay his traffic ticket. He'd refuse, and then got his license revoked, and we had to pay $600, which was half our rent. That type of cow. Just dumb. Then he'd declare, well, now we know, as if he'd learned a lesson, but it'd happen all over again. He was an enormous weight to keep afloat. The last straw was our final year of marriage he'd found better paying work. Instead of following my advice and putting away money for taxes, he'd rolled his eyes and told me to shut up, many times. Well, I did our taxes that year and ended up owing $8,000 because he was an independent contractor, but didn't plan like one. $8,000 was about a third of my yearly salary. I told him, as soon as the taxes were prepared, that I wanted a divorce. As soon as he moved out, what do you know all of a sudden, he found a good-paying job to support himself. As for me, I fell in love with having total control of my money and because I wasn't so drained from being around him all the time, I got a better paying job and got raises. Went from making about $1.25K part-time to $1.90K full-time within five years of the divorce. If he'd bothered to hire a lawyer, he would have been told that I could have owed him alimony under CA law. Whoever makes more can be liable for alimony. Story 28. When I sat outside of my apartment after another long day of work and didn't want to go inside because I worried that he may have committed. And then I felt relief at the thought, and felt poor for thinking that, and knew it was time to end it. He never worked the entire five years we were together. He didn't take care of the apartment while I worked two to three jobs to pay for everything. He'd play video games all day long and cried if he couldn't play. We didn't have close relationship for four years of the marriage. He was depressed and refused therapy. So that last poor thought of mine was the last straw and I sent him packing. Story 29. My ex always suffered from bipolar disorder. We got married young. When I finished school, she stopped working. She wanted to be a writer. My income was enough for her to stay home and write short stories and poetry, so that's what she did. Her depression is the first crack in the marriage, and it's not her fault. But the reality is that there were plenty of days when it was hard to come home to the cloud of despair that was my ex. But I had made a commitment, and I loved her, so I just reminded myself that her depression weighed on her far more than it weighed on me and muscled on. Fast forward about 12 years, about four and a half years ago, I get a new job. It still pays well enough for her to stay home. But by now, she hasn't written much in a while. And she started smoking candy. It helps counteract some side effects of her medication. As a result of the new job, we move from our home in the city out into some cookie-cutter suburb. Neither of us is happy with the location. But the job is too far for me to commute. I try to make the best of it. She starts smoking more candy and spending her days watching the same TV shows over and over. I swear. She's probably seen every episode of Buffy and every episode of Stargate, SG-1 at least 20 times. So living in suburban hell was crack number two. And the increasing amount of time she spent stoned was, quite frankly, crack number three. Two and a half years ago, I got a new boss who was, and probably still is, though I haven't seen her in a year and a half, the queen, bad person, unpleasant person of the world. Working for her made my life miserable. I got depressed, though I didn't know it at the time. My ex wanted me to get therapy. I thought, what's the point? I've got a poor boss. That's just life. What's a therapist going to tell me that I don't already know? Huge mistake in hindsight. I eventually did get therapy and learned a lot about perspective and being able to let nonsense work stuff go that would have helped me back then. Oh well. In any event, my depression was crack number three. At the same time, I got my new boss. The incident happened. And if any one thing caused the divorce, it was the incident. 
The incident. My ex's best friend of 25 years, best friend to the point that they call each other sisters, lives in another city. One night at around 1 a.m., about a year before the end of the marriage, I'm across the country on a business trip and my ex and her best friend are chatting on Facebook. The best friend is something of a narcissistic sociopath. And so when my ex did something to pour out the water off her friend, the friend decided to call our local police and claim my ex was to the sky. The police showed up, and while my ex was not to the sky, they decided to drag her off to the hospital. And I do mean drag. My ex didn't want to go and the physically dragged her out of the house, leaving bruises and scrapes. Now, my ex's biggest fear was always involuntary commitment. So this was like her nightmare come to life. Long story short, they release my ex first thing in the morning when the psychiatrist on call shows up and concludes she's not to the sky, but the damage is done. My ex has PTSD. I'm even deeper into my own depression because of secondary PTSD, and we're on a collision course for divorce. The rest plays out about like you'd expect. I shut down emotionally. She starts spending all her time on Facebook, reconnecting with old boyfriends. We try to make it work for a year, by which I mean we ignore he problem and pretend it's not falling apart for a year. And then she decides to leave me to go live in the little town across the country where her high school boyfriend lives. That was last March, 18 months ago, give or take. Until July, I was hoping for reconciliation. I put in a lot of work on beating my depression, and by September, I was in a good and healthy place, and actually quite thankful to be out of that marriage. I never would have left on my own, but she did me a huge favor. Meanwhile, her high school boyfriend wanted nothing to do with her, and from what I can tell, she's not done a damn thing to improve her life. To the contrary, last month she moved across the country to live with the psycho friend sister, who falsely called to have her committed. Go figure. I only ever hear from her when she's got some problem in her life that, in her fevered imagination, is my fault. Example. She took one of the cars when she left. Back in June, the registration expired, and somehow it was my responsibility to register her car for her, even though she was now living in a completely different state from where we had lived together. I got several angry emails and threats to file motions with the court. Now, I'm just waiting for the divorce to be final. It's been dragging out for reasons I really can't comprehend. I've moved on with my life in every way but legally, and I'm long since ready to be officially divorced. BTW, to the extent you're asking this because you're contemplating divorce, I highly, highly, highly recommend counseling, both individual and marital. And the people over at slash r slash divorce are super friendly and supportive. Story 30. My first marriage ended when I found out she wasn't going to work but shopping and sleeping with a cop. I went to her work one day to surprise her and nobody heard of her. I called her cell and she said she was with a customer and don't bother her at work. I addressed the issue when she got home and she got upset as she can't trust a person who goes out of his way to spy on her. I left for work the next day and returned home to find her stuff gone and she had moved out. Oh, the joint bank account was cleaned out too. As the days passed, I found out we were in massive debt. She took out loans from our joint account and had credit card debt too. Being married in a joint property state didn't help either. Weeks later, I come home to an eviction notice as she was behind on rent, despite going as far to fool me with fake receipts. Add in the local police harassing me too. Numerous driving infractions which led to me walking versus driving, oh, and seeing her on ride-alongs too. I moved out of the state and filed for divorce. She never responded to the court summons, so the divorce was filed under abandonment. I filed for bankruptcy and learned to take care of my own finances at all times. Story 31. She left me for her manager 1st of May. She slept with him sometime in late April. My state has a mandatory separation period, so November will be when the divorce can be final. Just found out recently she's 10 weeks pregnant with his kid. She's always had bipolar disorder. But I thought we had finally found a therapist who had a good mix of sweets and counseling. We married sort of young, when I was 21 and she was 22. I think what finally drove her to another man was that we had an argument in February about having kids. She basically said that if we hadn't had any by the time she was 30, we'll turn 28 in December, that she wasn't going to try to have any. The argument stemmed from the fact that one of our friends, who is in med school, got pregnant, and I was still making us wait until she had paid off her prodigious debt that I wasn't aware of before the marriage. We sat down and laid out a financial plan to put us in a place to start having kids next, but I guess that wasn't soon enough for her. Story 32. We had been having trouble for some time. She was very controlling and critical, which caused many arguments. I had developed depression, which I believe was exacerbated, if not caused by our relationship. Honestly, I wanted to leave, but I felt I had to stay for the kids. Our daughter was potty training and was out of nappies. One day, she wet her knickers three times in a row. So after the third time, I decided there was no point in putting fresh ones on. She could go bare under her dress. This wasn't intended as a punishment, simply a way to reduce laundry. My wife went off the handle, I shouted back, and then went to bed to sulk and calm down. 
Ten minutes later, the police arrived, talked with her, then informed me that based on what she had told them, they could arrest me, but would let me off with a warning instead. The male officer gave me the best advice I've ever had. I should get out now, because if I ended up with a police record, it would make it less likely I would have access to the kids after the inevitable breakup. I left the next day. She called nearly every day for the next few months asking when I was coming back. She couldn't understand why I had left or that I was gone for good. When it finally sunk in, she flipped out again and started denying me access to one of our daughters. But that's another story. Story 33. Came home early one day to see an unfamiliar truck in the driveway. I drove around the corner and texted her I'm on my way home. She responded she was at the beach with some female friends. Sure enough, I see her and some dude hop in the truck and take off. I brought it up with her later and she said he was just a friend and didn't want me to think she was cheating. However, I later found her second phone hidden away with a bunch of dirty texts to about seven other guys. We were only married for three months. Flipping worker. Story 34. I was young and very naive. I met a girl who was a single mom, and for some dumb peach reason, I thought I could play the part of the hero. I married her, bought us cars and a house, and raised her little girl as if she was my own. What I didn't realize was how hard it would be, and that my wife had a lot of baggage. It wasn't as if she was just some innocent woman who got knocked up by the wrong dude. There was a reason she was a single mom. After a few years, I discovered she was having an affair with a much younger man. Even though our relationship had been on the rocks for a while, I still tried to win her love back for those first few weeks after my discovery. It's very easy to assume that if you found yourself in that situation, that you would head straight for the door, but reality is always something much different than you imagine it. Eventually, after weeks of being strung along while she was out running around with her boy toy, and I was left at home watching her kid, I decided to get out of town. I headed to Los Angeles where a couple good friends were trying to make a name for themselves. I spent a couple weeks clearing my head out west with my friends. They weren't successful by any means, but they were living on their own terms. One of my friends told me that their door was always open for me if I wanted to come out their way. I went home, filed for divorce the next day, took her car back and sold it along with the house, and the day after the judge granted the divorce I was driving out to LA, with all my belongings stuffed in the back seat. That was 15 years ago. Since then, I have remarried to an amazing woman, have two beautiful children of my own, and am still a resident of Los Angeles. Looking back, as much pain and nonsense I went through dot dot dot, it was all totally worth it. I am 100 times a better man now having lived through that experience. Story 35. We've been married four years, had a son who will be two in September. After he was born, she started to get back in shape, going to the gym daily. After months of gym time, she started to look better. She signed up for a new gym this past December, February. I moved out. She would work from 8.30 a.m. to about 4 p.m. Come home for 45 men, see me and our son, then off to the gym for two hours, sometimes a little longer. I worked nights, so we hardly saw each other on top of her gym time. Anyways, she came out as to have fallen in love with her new gym trainer. She would spend a ton of time with this new guy, going to the park, taking her son to the gym so he could learn kickboxing. She had a son prior to us. She even went as far as lying to our babysitter and not coming home when she was supposed to and ditching her grandma, whom came over for dinner, and ditching her son. To hang out with this guy, needless to say, that was the last straw. We have one more mediation appointment before our divorce papers cable be filed. I tried doing everything I could to keep the marriage going, but she didn't want to work on it. I even went to therapy, tried changing, changed shifts I was on, took days off to spend with her. In the end, she just didn't want to be with me. So, this is why we are getting a divorce. And in the end, according to CA, I'm the bad guy, and I have to pay and get 35% custody. Stupid state. Story 36. Went out with my brother. First time going out in years. She thought I was staying at his house overnight. Come home, walk into bedroom, and find her cuddled up to a basketball player. Both. The smell of close relationship intoxicating our room. Our young children sleeping in the next room. If not for them, I would have done something horrible. We were married five years. Edit. That was a couple years ago. She, 28, got married to a Marine who was 20. They had their wedding, the day after our divorce was final. Story 37. We were a young Christian couple that waited till marriage. She hated close relationship, and I stuck with it for six years thinking she'd learn to enjoy it. She maybe would try once a month, but hated every moment. Finally, one night, we went to Universal Studios' Halloween haunt. There were girls dancing at the entrance in bikinis. I just had the thought, I'm so horny all the time. And this woman I am with will never even touch me in a close relationship way. We had to make a plan like a week in advance and it could only happen on a Saturday morning. I was just stewing as we walked around the park thinking, why can't I go home and have close relationship with my wife? I was so angry. We were with a group and the whole night I was walking a good 10 feet away from all of them. I went home and slept on the couch. 
The next day I called up my buddy and stayed at his place. I told her I was never coming back. It was the greatest moment of my life, and every second of freedom after that hell has been incredible. Atheist now and life is good. Story 38. Not yet divorced. I need to get that paperwork going. There's a saying that goes something like, find someone whose demons play well with yours. Well, ours did not play well together. And while I will admit that I did plenty wrong, I was trying to fix it and needed her help. She was a very negative person. There was always talk about something being wrong or bad in her life. Often, it was about me and what I was doing, or not doing. But even when it wasn't me, she was always looking for something wrong. And at the same time, she was critically dependent on me for most everything. She couldn't sleep in a house alone without freaking out. She couldn't drive long distances, etc., etc. I couldn't go hang out with friends or do my own thing because I couldn't leave her alone. She wouldn't let me. That combination preyed on my depression, terminating my motivation to do anything for her and giving her something to bad person about constantly. It felt like everything I did was wrong, so I started doing nothing for her because I knew she wouldn't like whatever I tried. If I was going to be wrong, I decided it was easier to just earn it by doing nothing. Thing also had to be done her way, and if they weren't, then it was a sign that I didn't love her. Never mind that my opinion was always wrong, too. Every day was like walking on eggshells. I always wondered what her next outburst was going to be. It was when I finally heard some of my family's same opinions that I realized I didn't have to be with her. Our final fight was about the laundry and how me not folding it right and not remembering which drawer was the right one meant that I didn't love her and that I didn't have any brains. I was so tired of her lashing out at me when things weren't perfect that I just gathered some clothes, called my mother to come get me. My car at the time was her grandma's old car, so I felt like I should not use it and incite another battle and had our final argument outside the house we were renting. The one thing that stuck with me about that conversation was on the topic of marriage counseling. Before we got married, our officiant offered us counseling, and while I said yes, she said no. When I asked her about it, she said it was because she didn't think I was going to participate, which is ironic considering my one of my majors is psychology. That was September 28th of last year. We're getting close to a year now, and I still have no doubt that she would take me back if I tried. But I won't. I'm done being some woman's punching bag. But like I said, gotta get that paperwork done. Story 39. I got married at 19, was divorced two days after my 22nd birthday. He had cheated on me twice and blamed it on weight gain and me not having a job. I had gained about 10 pounds and we lived in a very small town where I couldn't find a job despite all of my efforts. So we moved back to my hometown. He found a job. I found a job. But by then we were so broken he just woke up one day, called me while I was at work, and told me he was day after Valentine's Day. Story 40. Together five years and married for a little over a year, I realized she never gave the effort I did. Everything that went wrong was my fault, whether it had any foundation or not. She was super manipulative, so she twisted me into believing her. Things had to be her way, including me. She tried to change so many aspects of me that it resulted in me being angry and depressed constantly. When she had a fit and left to take stay at her aunt and uncle's to make a point to me, my best friend started talking to me and told me about how it looked from his perspective. That's when I saw a therapist who basically in about three sessions told me I need to get the fudge out. So I did. Story 41. She cheated on me. I begged her to stay. We did counseling. And we limped along for another year or so before she finally had the courage to ask for a divorce. It broke me. But I'll never be able to thank her enough for ending it. It broke me. But breaking me was the only way I could ever rebuild myself. Now I'm engaged to be married next spring. And I'll never tolerate someone cheating on me again. Lessons learned the hard way for sure, but learned nonetheless. Story 42. I was a young, insecure kid who had never been on a date. She was a couple years older, with lots of mental issues, but she was into me, so I completely ignored all of the warning signs. During my last year in high school, she got pregnant. There was no way she was going with deprivation, and I was still in my OMG, this girl wants to sleep with me phase and wasn't thinking rationally about much. Soon we were married and had another kid. A few years later, I came to my senses, realized we were completely incompatible, and that I was deeply unhappy. I told her I wanted a divorce. After years of legal wrangling and such, I ended up with full custody of our daughters, and she mostly disappeared from our lives. Story 43. Suspected the ex-wife was cheating when she moved out of town to take a job she really didn't need to take. She got her own apartment, and I had really bad gut feelings for months. Got off work early, I commuted to work near there, and walked in on what seemed to me to be a pajama party with a guy there and another friend. I was mortified but not sure about anything. Denial is powerful. The guy was excruciatingly suspiciously nice to me. She confessed a few days later and said she wanted a divorce. We're actually on good terms now. 
We should never have gotten married, though, not compatible in any way. One, advice. I wish I had. Don't get married just because it seems to be the normal, expected, or comfortable thing to do. If your partner wants to but you're not sure, then trust yourself. You are not bound by law to get married by a certain age or ever. Don't do it unless it's right for you both. Trust me, it's easier to say no before than no after. Story 44. She was originally really clingy, but suddenly went through a phase where she wanted to go out with her girlfriends dancing. I was all about it since I'm not into dancing and I'd stay home with the kids. One weekend I got a babysitter so I could surprise her at the club she said they were going to. I went there and she wasn't. I waited until she got home and she swore she was there. I showed her the wristband they gave me and she still insisted she was there. I get that she was having an affair and I could understand. But to keep lying, I can't move beyond that. Story 45. She had psychiatric problems that were getting worse. She was in and out of the psych ward. She wasn't outright crazy most of the time. It was mostly just depression dotted with mildly psychotic episodes. Being around her was just really starting to weigh on me since there was nothing I could do. She was gaining weight, and I found her less and less attractive. Eventually, I said some really poor things, venting because I couldn't talk to her lest I just make her more depressed. On a forum like this, and she found it. Well, that was pretty much it. There was no taking back what I said. Story 46. Was willing to try to save it by counseling after I found out she cheated. Found messages to her boss, he gave her the gate key to his community, and they had cute little nicknames for each other. But she didn't want to do counseling. About a day after she tried to run me over with her mother's car, currently getting divorced. Taken about a year so far, and the next court date is five days from my birthday. Sigh. Story 47. When I was working a full-time job and an extra casual job, with three hours of travel every day, and he had a casual slash part-time job, and he didn't want to talk about getting another part-time job to help support our expenses, helping do chores around the house. He'd have whole days at home with only a two-hour session at night. His money was his, and my money was ours. I paid all the bills, and he wasn't interested in getting a real job. He got sucked into a, you can make dollar fifty k plus PA as a karate instructor. Surprisingly not quite true per S, he wasn't interested in a partnership, just somebody to be his mother. I consolidated his debts and organized a payment direct from his employer as he owed more and more each year before we got together. I didn't want his debt to be mine. I tried talking to him about us and everything a number of times over the last year. He didn't want to talk about it. The killer was when I was looking to buy a house together with my brother. My then-husband expected his name on the mortgage, despite not being able to put any money in for the